Hello, everyone. I hope you're all healthy and well. Welcome to the next talk in our Golden Webinars in Astrophysics series. Our speaker today is Makoto Yoshikawa, who is a professor uh, at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. My name is Thomas Puzia, and together with Evelyn Johnston, we have organized today's webinar for you. As in previous webinars, we have arranged for simultaneous language interpretation provided by Mr. Patricio Gonzalez, who will be simultaneously translating for us into Spanish. En sus dispositivos, pueden escuchar la interpretación al español de la conferencia al pinchar el botón de interpretación que se encuentra en la parte inferior derecha de la ventana de aplicación Zoom y seleccionar español. We would like to acknowledge the generous support of the Center for Astrophysics and Related Technologies, also known as CATA, for its Spanish acronym, to make this uh, webinar series possible. Thank you so much for all your feedback and comments. If you're watching a recording of this talk on YouTube, please leave your comments below. If you would like to support the Golden Webinar series or give us feedback, please send us an email. And if you have any questions during the talk, please type them into the Q&A window and you can also upload questions and comment on them there and we'll select the best questions from the Q&A window for the discussion at the end of the talk. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly introduce the other members of our panel today. As usual, we have Mr. Patricio Gonzalez, who is our interpreter. Uh, from the faculty at the Institute of Astrophysics at PUC, we have Alejandro Clocchiati. We also have the great pleasure to welcome our guest panelists today. We have Rohan Rahat Gaukar, uh, who is a recent graduate student from the University of Toledo and intern at Gemini Observatory. We have Mike Nolan, who, as you may remember from a few weeks ago, uh, gave us a webinar about OSIRIS-REx, uh, and he is a senior research scientist at, at the University of Arizona. And we have Wesley Fraser, who is an astronomer at the Hertzberg Astronomy and Astrophysics Research Centre and the National Research Council of Canada. And finally, we have uh, Angela and Maren Hempel, who are astronomers at the Universidad Andres Bello here in Santiago. And of course, we have our usual excellent team of Q&A managers, Ricardo Acevedo, Daniela Fernandez, and Carol Rojas. It is our pleasure to introduce Makoto Yoshikawa as our speaker today. Makoto-san obtained his PhD from the Department of Astronomy at the University of Tokyo in 1989, and then moved to the Japan Society for the promotion of science as a researcher. In 1991, he became a senior researcher at the Communications Research Laboratory. And in 1998, he joined the Institute of Space and Aeronautical Science, which became part of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency in 2003. He's part of the Orbital Determination Group at ISAS at the Institute, and has been involved with Hayabusa and Akatsuki missions. More recently, he was the project manager and later the mission manager for Hayabusa 2, an asteroid sample return mission. His research focuses on celestial mechanics, particularly in the orbital anal analysis of small solar system bodies, such as asteroids and comets. He is currently engaged in research on orbit determination for satellites and planetary spacecraft. And he is also interested in space guard, which concerns Earth's impact on celestial objects. And now we'd like to hand over to Makoto-san to tell us about the challenges of the asteroid sample return mission Hayabusa 2. Oh, okay, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, very kind introduction for me. I am Makoto Yoshikawa. Uh, I'm a mission manager of Hayabusa 2. I'm very happy uh, to talk about uh, Hayabusa 2. Okay, now uh, I share uh, my screen. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Very, very well. Excellent. Uh, okay, thank you. So uh, this is a, a illustration of Hayabusa 2. And uh, uh, in this illustration, Hayabusa 2 is uh, carrying out the uh, second touchdown near the artificial crater. So I will talk about this in, in later in detail. Okay, at first, uh, since I am working in JAXA, uh, I uh, uh, talk about uh, JAXA a little. So uh, now I am in Japan here, and maybe most of you are in Chile here, uh, very deep, uh, far from Japan. Uh, the time difference is uh, 12 hours. So now in Japan, uh, 8 o'clock eight in the morning uh, on Saturday, but maybe you are in the, in the evening. <laughs> and uh, 
JAXA has many offices and facilities inside of Japan like this. And uh, I am working here in Sagamihara campus. So uh, in this uh, in campus, uh, we study astronomy or planetary science. And the uh, next chart uh, show you Japan's planetary mission. Uh, we do not have uh, uh, many missions for planetary, for planetary science, but uh, some of them is very interesting, uh, such as the Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2. Uh, today, of course, I talk about Hayabusa 2 in detail. And uh, for example, Icarus, this is also an interesting mission. This is a, a solar sail mission. Okay, so since uh, today's topic is asteroid, at first I quickly show the, uh, the number of asteroids. Uh, maybe uh, uh, some of you may know, now we uh, discovered many asteroids. So uh, this is a num number uh, of discovered asteroids in today, uh, about one million asteroids. And, uh, uh, and especially uh, we are interested in near Earth asteroids and the number of near Earth asteroids is about 24,000. The, uh, the this number is increasing very rapidly. And one of them is uh, Ryugu uh, that Spe uh, uh, has the two explored. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, images of asteroids. Uh, these big ones, Ceres and Vesta, uh, the shape, shape is uh, almost spherical, but uh, uh, the others, the shapes are very uh, irregular. And uh, this right, uh, bo bottom right one, this is the Itokawa. Uh, uh, Itokawa, uh, uh, Hayabusa uh, one, uh, explored this very interesting asteroid. And then uh, next uh, is uh, this one. Uh, this is a Ryugu and a Bennu. Uh, the shape is very similar. I think this is very, very interesting. Uh, and uh, as you may know, I think you may know, this is a Alcos, uh, New Horizon spacecraft flyby. Very interesting shape. Anyway, uh, the asteroid is very interesting uh, in science. And so today I talk about the Ryugu. So at first I show you the uh, position and orbit of Ryugu uh, today. So uh, this is a, a, a asteroid belt and the Ryugu, Ryugu's orbit is inside of asteroid belt. This pink colored orbit is a Ryugu's orbit. And uh, uh, please look at the right hand side here. So this is a Ryugu. Uh, of today, today's position. And this is the Earth. And the uh, Earth and Ryugu and other planets, uh, all of them is uh, moving uh, counterclockwise this way. So at the, at the end of uh, this year, uh, Earth and Ryugu, uh, uh, Ryugu, I'm sorry, the Ryugu approach to the Earth uh, very closely around here. So at the same time, Hayabusa 2 uh, comes back to the Earth. Okay, so now I uh, talk about the Hayabusa mission. Uh, Hayabusa 2 uh, mission is the second asteroid sample return mission following Hayabusa. And the target asteroid is Ryugu, which is C type. And this is important because uh, we want to study organic matters. And uh, yes, so main objective is uh, to study organic matter at the beginning of the solar system. The uh, Hypsa 2 was launched in 2014 and arrived at asteroid Yugu in 2018. And Earth return is this year, at the end of this year. Okay, so uh, this left hand Illustration. This is a uh, uh, Hayabusa one, 
And uh, the target asteroid was Itokawa S type. And the uh, right hand side, this helps the two. And the uh, target asteroid is Ryugu uh, C type. Uh, the spacecraft is quite similar, uh, but uh, 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 we modified many parts in Hayabusa 2. Okay, so the important thing is uh, science. Uh, I think many of you may know that a solar system was born 4.6 billion years ago from the molecular cloud. And uh, large planets like Earth uh, evolved since then. But uh, small uh, bodies, uh, such as Itokawa, Ryu, or Ryugu, uh, they, we think, they have uh, original material. So if we study uh, these asteroids, we can know the original material that made uh, the Earth or planet. So that's why we uh, go to these asteroids and get the sample. The, and especially Ryugu, the Ryugu is C-type asteroid. So we think Ryugu has organic matter or water. If we can get the organic matter from Ryugu, uh, we may study the origin of life. So that is our main target. Uh, of Hayabusa 2 mission. Now, this is a Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. It is not so big. The body size is about one meter by 1.6 meters and 1.25 meters. And uh, the total mass, including, including uh, fuel, is just uh, 200, uh, 609 kilograms. But it is small, but uh, it has many uh, instruments such as the ONC, this is an optical navigation camera, uh, very important. And this is a LiDAR, a laser altimeter, uh, to measure distance uh, between spacecraft and the asteroid. And this is NIRS-3, this is a near-infrared spectrometer, and the TIR, this is a thermal image. And uh, HEPSA-2 has many uh, lander and rovers, a mascot, is a small lander uh, provided by DLR Germany and the CNES France. And we have three small rovers, Minerva 2. So, yes, so th these, these are the science instruments. So we have many science instruments and uh, we can uh, do the science in a very wide scale range. So using these uh, remote, sensing, remote sensing instruments or SCI, this is a uh, impactor to create the small crater on the surface of uh, asteroid. And DCAM, this is a separation camera to observe the impact experiment. So using these, uh, we can do the macroscopic science. Uh, this is a, a scale of length, okay? This is, uh, zero is uh, one meter. And uh, if we get the sample, <clears throat> we can do the mac macros microscopic, microscopic, microscopic science. Sorry. And we have a lander and rover. So uh, like this, uh, we can study Ryugu in very wide scale range. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, mission flow. The launch was December 3rd, 2014, and exactly one year later, uh, Hayabusa 2 came back to the Earth to perform Earthing by December 3rd, uh, 2015. And then the asteroid arrival, Ryugu arrival, was June 27th, 2018. And then we did many things, uh, Minerva 2 uh, separation, uh, mascot separation, and the uh, uh, first touchdown was done in uh, February uh, 22nd last year. And then uh, we carried out the impact experiment. 
and the second touchdown was done uh, July last year. And finally, we separate two target markers and one a small rover uh, uh, around into the orbit around the Yugu. Uh, these, these became uh, artificial satellite around the Yugu. And HIFSA 2 uh, started uh, from Ryugu uh, November 13 last year. Now, and now it is on the way back to the Earth. The Earth return is uh, end of uh, this year. Actually, exactly uh, December 6 in Japanese time. Okay, so maybe it's better to show uh, some movie here. At first, I show uh, this movie. Uh, this is uh, from launch to asteroid arrival. Yes, the launch was 2014, December, and the spacecraft uh, leave the Earth like this. Okay. And then, yes, this is the orbit. Uh, and this is the IMO engine. Uh, we use IMO engine to change the orbit of spacecraft. And the first one year, uh, the spacecraft moves like this near the orbit of the Earth. Then Earth swing by. So uh, now I show you the Earth swing by like this. Then the orbit of spacecraft was changed uh, towards the orbit of Ryugu. Okay, and uh, and this is the first IMO engine operation. And uh, then. This is the second long-term IO engine operation, like this. So uh, we need two revolutions around the air, around the, around the sun before arriving at Ryugu. And finally, this is the third IO engine operation. Then a spacecraft arrived at Ryugu uh, in July 2018 like this. This is the arrival. Okay, so next I show you uh, the movie uh, uh, when spacecraft explore the river. Okay, so it starts uh, from uh, June uh, 2018, so arrival. So after this, we observed Ryugu and uh, September 2018, we separate the two small rover, Minerva uh, 2, 1. The altitude is about 50 meters. So very slowly, uh, they went down to the surface like this, and uh, bounce like this, and uh, stayed on the surface. And they can jump like this. And uh, uh, they took many images on the surface of Ryugu, and they measured the temperature of the surface of Ryugu. Both of two are successful. And, and then we separated the mascot, a small lander, by DLR and Kness, like this. Uh, this was also successful, and the uh, mascot uh, could uh, take a lot of data on the surface of Ryugu. Okay, so next uh, we separated the target marker. Uh, the, this is about 10 meters from the surface of Ryugu, and we separate these small, uh, uh, small uh, things. Uh, this is an artificial landmark. So uh, we use this target marker uh, when uh, spacecraft touch down. But at this time, the spacecraft didn't touch down because uh, the surface is very uh, rough. So uh, at this time, we just dropped the target marker. And touchdown was carried out in February 2019. And the spacecraft went down to about 8.5 meters from the surface. And the uh, spacecraft was watching this target marker. And it moves uh, quite precisely to the uh, place where uh, touchdown, like this. 
and then it changed uh, the attitude a little bit and uh, free fall. Actually, this is very slowly, but uh, the video is uh, rather fast. And some platform touched the surface. Then a small projectile was shot like this. And uh, uh, we think we can get the surface material and uh, uh, lift up. Later, I will show you the real image. So uh, the first touchdown was successful. OK, so next is a, a impact experiment. Spacecraft went down to about 500 meters and separate this uh, impactor. An impactor will explode uh, 40 minutes later. So spacecraft quickly move and hide behind the asteroid. But if uh, sp spacecraft, spacecraft hides behind asteroids, then we cannot see the impact experiment. So before hiding, spacecraft release this small camera. This is a, a separation camera, DCAM-3. So this small camera uh, can observe the impact experiment, like this. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, we, can, we were able to uh, get the uh, ejector image. Also, I will show you the real one later. Yes, and the spacecraft uh, moved uh, down to uh, below the asteroid. So after this, about three weeks later, uh, it went to the uh, actual crater to observe it. So uh, this is a second touchdown. So second touchdown was done near the uh, actual crater to get the subsurface material. So uh, this is a artificial crater, and the spacecraft touched down about 20 meters from the uh, artificial crater. And touched down method is as, as same as the uh, first one. So from the uh, altitude of 8.5 meters, it uh, made free fall. and uh, uh, projectile. So uh, I think uh, 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 we uh, could get the subsurface material too. So uh, main mission uh, was uh, finished up to here, but uh, we did additional uh, mission. Uh, that is the artificial satellite mission. At first, uh, we separate two target markers. This is the first one. And uh, spacecraft changed the, uh, the motion and separate the second one, like this. Yes, well, this is the second one. And both of them uh, go around the blue group. And spacecraft observed the motion. Yes, so this one is a equatorial motion and this one is a polar motion. And later spacecraft observed uh, two target markers uh, motion around the UV like this. And then we can calculate the uh, gravity field of Ryugu very precisely. So uh, this, this was also successful. And finally, uh, we separate, separated uh, Minerva 2-2 uh, also into the orbit around the Ryugu. OK, so uh, all of these mission, missions were successful. And uh, uh, the spacecraft uh, left 
Google uh, on December 13 last year. Okay, so this is the uh, end of the, this movie. So now from here, I show you the real uh, image uh, related to Ryugu. And uh, this is the first image of Ryugu, uh, just a point. Uh, this image was taken uh, from about uh, 1.3 million kilometers. And this is an image of approaching to Ryugu. At first, the shape is just a point, but uh, uh, we saw the real shape like this. We are very surprised to see that this shape, this spinning top shape, because we never imagined the shape is something like this. Anyway, uh, uh, the arrival was successful, so uh, we are very happy. And uh, this is a group photo in, in our operation room. Uh, as you can see, we are very happy. Uh, this is a, a current project manager, uh, Tsuda-san, and I am here. And uh, yes, this is a Ryugu. Uh, the shape is spinning top, very interesting. And also, uh, the surface of Ryugu was covered by lots of boulders. There are no wide areas, <coughs> no wide flat areas. So that make, makes the touchdown very difficult. We continued a scientific observation and uh, uh, we made a very precise shape model like this, or this is a color image of Ryugu, very black color. And the uh, uh, bottom middle, this is a, a temperature observation. And this is a gravity field, uh, right, right bottom. And the uh, uh, upper right, this is a uh, near infrared spectrum. This black line is a near infrared, infrared spectrum of Ryugu. And we saw small absorption at near the three micron. So this indicates that surface material uh, con contains uh, some water. And this is a very amazing uh, images uh, taken by the Minerva 2-1 on the surface of Ryugu. The left hand uh, photo, this one. Uh, this photo was taken while Minerva 1-2 was hopping on, on the surface of Ryugu. And uh, this is the surface of Ryugu. And the right hand, hand uh, image. Uh, actually, this is a, a motion of the sun uh, seen from the surface of Ryugu. Uh, very uh, amazing. And also, uh, this is an uh, image taken by mascot. Uh, yes, so left hand side, you can see mascot just after separation. So, uh, mascot also uh, took a lot of interesting data. And the uh, data was published in Science Journal. Okay, so the most difficult thing uh, was touchdown because the surface of Ryugu was uh, covered by boulders and uh, we couldn't see wide uh, flat area. So at first we chose this L08 area for touchdown place. And then inside this area, we found this two meter, uh, 20 meter size uh, area So uh, for, for the touchdown. So we dropped target marker uh, inside this area, but the target marker dropped just outside from this area, five meters from this area. Then uh, we uh, discussed where to touch down and finally, we chose this area near touchdown, just a, a six meter in diameter area. Uh, this area is the almost same size of the spacecraft. So we must do the very accurate uh, operation. Uh, before uh, talking about the touchdown, I show you the target marker operation uh, uh, separation uh, image. So this small dot is a target marker uh, separated from the spacecraft. And this is a shadow of a spacecraft. 
and uh, you can see that spacecraft is following the target marker. Okay, so uh, this is the first touchdown. Spacecraft went down to the altitude of 45 meters and following and the detect target marker here, and then went down again to the 8.5 meter and hovering and uh, free fall touchdown. So this sequence was quite successful, and uh, uh, this shows the uh, real image of the first touchdown. Uh, this is a movie. Uh, the uh, uh, speed of movie is five times faster than uh, real, so it's very uh, quick. So now going down from 8.5 meters to the surface, and soon uh, this sampler horn touched this the surface. Yes, right now. Then uh, lift up. So you can see a uh, lots of uh, small uh, rocks uh, from blown up to to uh, like this. So this is this is also a very uh, nice uh, image. And th this first touchdown accuracy was just uh, one meter. Uh, error was just one meter. Very precise navigation was performed. So again, this is a group photo. Too many people in in our uh, operation room. We are very happy here. And next uh, challenge is the uh, impact experiment. As I told before, the spacecraft went down to the altitude of about 500 meters and separate the uh, SCI, SCI means small carrion impactor, uh, impactor. And impactor, this impactor explodes just 40 minutes later. So spacecraft must move like this and hide behind the asteroid to avoid the debris from impactor. But before that, we separate. Uh, this small camera. So uh, this is a very uh, acrobatic uh, 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 operation, but this operation was also successful. And this is a real image of impactor just after separation, like this. And uh, this is a ejecta uh, from the surface of UV. And I have movie too. This is a movie. So uh, we can see uh, uh, ejecta uh, uh, came up from the surface of UV like this. And uh, three weeks later, a spacecraft went to this uh, artificial crater. And this is an image uh, of an artificial crater. This is a left hand side is a before impact, middle is after impact, and right hand side is a comparison. You can see clearly that uh, we can make a very uh, big uh, artificial crater. The size is about 15 meters in diameter. So next thing is uh, uh, whether we sh should do touchdown uh, here. But, but uh, actually, inside crater was very dangerous. So, so we study the surface of around this crater. And this is the result. This is a, a, a actual crater. And uh, this black color means the surface color was changed uh, uh, before and after. So this means that uh, ejecta were accumulated in on this black colored surface. So we chose this area, this is a flat area, uh, to, for the second touchdown. But again, uh, this area is very rough, uh, like this. Uh, this. This is a uh, actual crater, and you can see there are lots of boulders. But this small area is flat, so we tried to touch down this area, but before that, we study uh, this area uh, quite in detail. 
And the second touchdown, and the sequence is quite similar, but the uh, uh, first hovering altitude was changed to 30 meters uh, from 45 meters for first touchdown. Uh, because the, uh, by the first touchdown, some uh, camera was covered by a uh, dust. So uh, the light signal was uh, weakened. So we uh, uh, changed the hovering altitude. But other thing is a, a similar same uh, as the first one. And the second touchdown was also successful. And now I show you the uh, real image of second touchdown. Now this movie is 10 times faster than uh, actual. Okay, so the same, touch the surface and lift up. Again, uh, lots of uh, stones blown up. And the second touchdown, uh, uh, the accuracy was much better. The error was just 660 60 centimeters. Okay, so, and fi finally, uh, we did this uh, target marker and uh, rover uh, uh, operation. Uh, I mean, uh, we made tar two target markers and rover uh, orbit around the Ryugu. And uh, we can see the motion of uh, these objects. Can you see uh, small dots moving here? Uh, these, this shows the, the motions of two target markers. Okay, so uh, this is the last uh, slide. Fair uh, uh, This image, uh, images were taken uh, no last November. So this is a final uh, image that Hayabusa 2 uh, took. Okay. Okay, so now I talk about the what we will do from now on. So this is a return orbit. Uh, here, uh, 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 at this point, Hayabusa 2 left Hugo. Uh, and the first island operation was done. And the second observation was just finished. So finally, now we will do the uh, re-entry terminal guidance, this part. I show you this part in detail in next chart, this one. So uh, we finished up to here, TCM ZEL. TCM is trajectory correction maneuver. So from now, we, we will have five TCMs. Uh, first one is at the end of this month, and a very important TCM is TCM3 at the end of uh, November. By this TCM3, uh, the orbit of spacecraft changed to the orbit that collided to the, to the Earth. If we uh, do not do this TCM3, the spacecraft motion is something like this. Uh, it pa passed the, the Earth uh, about the alt altitude of 200 kilometers. And after TCM3, uh, we have a small correction TCM, uh, TCM4, and then capsule uh, will be released about half day before the re-entry. And after separation of capsule, uh, we will do the TCM5 uh, to avoid the uh, Earth collision and the spacecraft uh, will go to the next extended mission. Okay, and the re-entry is uh, around uh, two or three uh, o'clock on uh, December 6th uh, in Japanese time. So in Chile time, uh, it is a uh, uh, evening of uh, December 5th. And this uh, uh, re-entry place is here in Australia, uh, this place. Uh, this is the uh, Umera profited area. Uh, this is the same place that uh, the capsule of Hapsa 1 returned. So now we are preparing uh, for the uh, re-entry. So I have another movie, uh, this one. Uh, this is Hapsa 2 Earth Return movie. 
So uh, yes, uh, this is a, a current position. I have the two underers. And the uh, first thing is TCM1 uh, at the end of this month. Uh, very small correction of orbit. Uh, like this. And then TCM3, this is important. Like this, and the orbit will be changed like this. And then uh, spacecraft uh, changed its attitude, attitude largely and separate uh, the re-entry capsule like this. This is uh, about 12 hours before the uh, exact re-entry. And then spacecraft again changed its attitude. And this is TCM5 uh, to avoid the collision to the Earth. Okay, so uh, here, this is a capsule. And uh, uh, if possible, uh, we, we want to uh, take an image of capsule from the spacecraft. So, so we change the, its attitude again and try to uh, take a photo uh, of this capsule from this spacecraft. So capsule uh, uh, becomes like this, a fireball. So we don't know whether we can do, we can take an image, but uh, we will try this. This is a wide angle camera. Yes, then the spacecraft changed its attitude again and uh, left, leave the Earth. And this is a fireball. We will observe this. And uh, at the altitude of about 10 kilometers, uh, parachute uh, will be deployed. And uh, af after that, a uh, capsule uh, goes down slowly and uh, land on the surface of Uber. And then we will uh, uh, search this capsule and go bring it back to, to Japan. Okay, so we will do this uh, from now on. Maybe I, I talk, uh, my uh, time was maybe over, so I quickly show uh, the rest of my slide. Uh, this is a, a re-entry process, just I talked. And uh, we will uh, have many methods, uh, optical observation uh, or a beacon. So after uh, deployment of parachute, the beacon signal emitted will be emitted. So uh, if we can detect this beacon, we can estimate where the capsule lands. And also we have the uh, helicopter and the uh, drone to, uh, uh, to find the capsule. Okay, so uh, this is a high school mission and uh, we have very nice international cooperation like this uh, with uh, European people, uh, with uh, uh, American people or Australian people. And uh, this is a, a group photo of types of two science team. And uh, now we have many scientific results. Since I don't have enough time, I quickly show my slide. Uh, this is the first um, major result uh, about Ryugu uh, published uh, on Science Journal. And the uh, important uh, thing, uh, result is uh, the density of Ryugu. Uh, it is uh, 1.19 gram per cubic centimeter. So this implies that the Ryugu, the structure of Ryugu is labrophile. So uh, the porosity is very big, uh, more than 50%. And we, study, uh, we studied the shape of Ryugu and uh, uh, we thought that originally 
the Ryugu spin period is very short, about 3.5 hours. But now the Ryugu spin period is about 7.6 hours. So uh, now the spin speed was uh, uh, decreased. But uh, in the past, uh, uh, we think uh, the spin was fast. If so, we can uh, uh, explain the, this shape. And this is a, a near infrared uh, result. Uh, there are very small uh, absorption. So uh, the material, surface material Ryugu has uh, water, but uh, the amount of water is uh, not so much. And uh, this is uh, another result, uh, evolution of Ryugu. And, uh, uh, and the, in this study, uh, they, esti they, they estimated that parent body of Ryugu may uh, come from the Polana or Uiraria uh, families. And this is a LIDAR result. I skip this. And also, uh, this is a summer infrared ima imaging date, data. So now, like this, we have many science data. And uh, yes, so for example, uh, we think uh, the surface material or uh, border on the surface of Ryugu may be rather fluffy. And uh, since uh, the artificial crater was very large, so uh, we think the uh, uh, surface material has an extremely, extremely low strength. So now we have such uh, uh, interesting data. Okay, so this is a, a conclusion. Uh, as I told today, uh, we did many uh, challenges. And uh, here I summarize seven engineering world first challenges. So all of these uh, were successful. So last thing we sh should do is uh, Earth return. And it will be at the end of uh, this year. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Margaret san This was a beautiful talk, a wonderful overview of the mission and, and the science involved. Um, before we go to the Q&A, is there um, other questions from the panel? So Wesley had a question, I believe. Let's go with yeah, this. Yeah, uh, just uh, curious. So that the, I, I agree that the reasonable interpretation of the 2.7 micron feature is uh, essentially water of hydration in, in the silicates, uh, but I'm wondering if that has actually been uh, corroborated, because I know one of the outstanding questions is, of course, what are the organic darken darkening agents, um, and there are organic materials that have absorption at 2.7 microns as well. So uh, I'm just curious, what, what other evidence that, to suggest that this is, in fact, water you're looking at and not something else? Uh, yes. Uh... Yes, this is a very important point, and uh, uh, we we had many discussions. But uh, <laughs> in fact, when we uh, get the sample, uh, we we can find the exact so, uh, answer. So yeah, okay. we sample. Yes. <laughs> I can't freaking wait. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So. I have a question, and it's a joint question for Makoto Sam and for Mike Nolan. So, uh, in the talk, you showed that, um, that Ryugu has like a pinwheel shape. And if I remember correctly, uh, Mike's talk also showed that Bennu had a pinwheel shape. Um, is this coincidence, or is it likely that this is a standard shape for many asteroids? Uh, yes. So, up to now, uh, uh, we uh, there are some radar observation of small asteroids, and uh, uh, some of them, the shape is quite similar to this uh, spinning top shape. So, uh, if the spin of asteroid is very fast, then it can be uh, the shape like this. I, actually, I have a model here. 
this is a beauty model. Thank you. Yes. Cool. And uh, this is a very uh, uh, interesting shape. From this side, the shape is very uh, round, circular. Okay. So if this uh, spin spin rate is very fast, then this the shape of asteroid bec becomes like this. Okay. Okay, um, Myron had a question. Yes. Um, since Evelyn just mentioned the similarities between the shape of Bennu and uh, Ryuku, I want to go in the same direction. So, in Michael's talk, he mentioned that uh, Bennu has a kind of a large debris field which may be used to study a little bit the inner structure of that asteroid using their orbits. Does uh, Ryuku have a similar debris field or at least some debris field around it? And uh, the other question was, you mentioned the extended mission of uh, the spacecraft. Um, the targets for that, were they selected with specific signs in mind or mostly because these were the targets that are reachable with, from the spacecraft? Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, first question, we said that debris field. Uh, what do you mean by a debris field? Uh, there were small particles or smaller mm -hmm. objects orbiting mm -hmm. the... Ah. The asteroid. Ah, uh, we couldn't find such uh, uh, such thing around the Okay, so your second question is about the extended mission. Yeah. Since I I don't uh, have time, so I didn't talk about it. But uh, actually, I have uh, uh, material for the extended mission. Well, actually, we already already selected the target of extended mission and it is very tiny uh, asteroid so the target asteroid is this one 1998 ky26 uh, this is very small the diameter is just uh, uh, 30 meters and the uh, spin is very fast the spin period is, spin period is just 10 minutes. So this is our uh, target of ex extended mission. And uh, we chose this one uh, mostly because Hayabusa 2 can rendezvous to this asteroid. And also because uh, such small asteroid was never being explored before. So I, we think uh, this asteroid is very interesting for science too. But there, there's one problem. Uh, it takes a very long uh, time to reach this asteroid. So this is a, a mission sequence. And uh, actually it takes about uh, uh, 10, more than 10 years to reach this asteroid. Oh. <laughs> but uh, before that, we have one asteroid flyby here, uh, 2001 CC21 flyby is 2016, uh, 26, 26. And uh, arrival of uh, KY26 is uh, 2031. So it takes a long time, but uh, uh, this is the mission, so it is okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, Angela had a question. Uh, yes, first, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Uh, and I have a question to one of your early slides when you showed the, um, the orbits of first the planets and all the asteroids. If I remember correctly, there were two concentrations of uh, asteroids very close to the uh, orbit of Jupiter. Uh, shouldn't Jupiter have cleaned those orbits already? Uh, yes, uh, I think you uh, mentioned about the uh, Torian asteroid. So I share the screen again. Yes, this one, or maybe this is much better. Yes, so uh, this is a Jupiter, 
And I think you are talking about this part and this part. Yes. Yes. So these are uh, uh, Trojan asteroid, and uh, uh, the they have the same uh, rotational period. So uh, they never collide to uh, Jupiter. And uh, okay. yes, this is a triangular. Uh, uh, what should I say? Uh, in three body problem, this is a solution of triangular solution. So this is a, a stable path. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, I'll go to the Q and A and choose a few questions there. So the top question in the Q and A is from Lucas Alvarez. Was Hayabusa two ever considered to be in orbit or under the gravitational influence of Ryugu? Uh, and, and was the was the asteroid to was the asteroid uh, an influence on the tra trajectory of Hayabusa two? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, the question is uh, why Hayabusa two uh, didn't orbit around the Ryugu. Well, uh, was uh, it in orbit? Uh, yes. Actually, Hayabusa two didn't orbit around the Ryugu. Hayabusa two was uh, hovering, always hovering, not. Uh, uh, moving around the Ryugu because uh, it is much easier to hover than uh, going around. And uh, the, um, uh, one of the reasons is the uh, gravity of Ryugu is very small, so uh, it is easier to hovering than orbiting around the Ryugu. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, thank you. Uh, so the next question is from Francisco Jara. Um, what, do you expect to find any kind of orga organic molecule, sorry, organic molecules related to life? Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so sorry, uh, the question jumped around on me. Uh, are you expecting to find any organic molecules related to life on Hayabu on Ryugu? Yes, uh, yes, it is a very interesting. Uh, uh, interesting thing. So uh, maybe uh, most interesting one is uh, amino acid. So if we, if we can find amino acid and uh, uh, we can compare them uh, with the uh, with the ones on the earth, um, uh, we we will uh, study the origin of life. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I'll take one more from the Q and A. So Enrique Paias has asked, um, what are the politics involved in landing things on asteroids and extracting material from them? For example, uh, who would regulate a hypothetical private company from wanting to prof profit from uh, space minerals? Uh, sorry, question is uh, about the sam sample. Uh, it's about the, the politics. Politics. Um, do, is there anyone regulating who can go to these asteroids to take the materials away, especially if they can profit from them? Ah, I see. Um, now, we we do not have such a discussion in Japan. Now we are doing only a scientific mission. Right. Okay, so maybe uh, yes, uh, we should uh, discuss something. In, in near future, but uh, currently we don't have uh, such things. Yeah, yeah. I guess for now, all the missions to asteroids are all science-based. Yes, in, in Japan, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alejandro had had a question. Yes. Uh, uh, congratulations on the mission to you and your colleagues. I mean, it's amazing, and the fact that you have done everything. Plan, and I hope that you get the sample and then you can learn beautiful things about uh, the stuff there in the asteroid. I, I am curious about the gravitational field of uh, Ryugu. H how strong is the gravity, the surface gravity? And what are the parameters of the satellite orbits that you left there? How long do they take to go around, etc.? How distant uh, they are from the asteroid? Yes. Yes, uh, the the strength of gravity is uh, about 
10,000, maybe a, a, a few 10,000, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one, one over a few 10,000 to the Earth's gravity. Do you understand? And uh, simply saying, the escape velocity, escape velocity from Ryugu is just uh, 30 centimeter per second. 30 centimeters per second, so very weak. And the uh, uh, artificial satellite uh, mission, uh, we separated uh, target markers and a small rover at the altitude of one kilometer. And the uh, target, marker, target markers were, uh, uh, were uh, uh, target markers uh, went uh, orbit around the Ryugu, I think uh, uh, two, six or seven orbit and uh, uh, dropped on the surface. Now we are uh, studying its motion in detail. So later we'll, we can estimate the gravity field of Ryugu in detail. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go to Rohan. Hello, um, it was a wonderful presentation. And uh, my question is more about the, since your expertise is in orbital analysis. So uh, my question was, what goes behind the scene when a problem occurs or when there's um, an error in the calculation? So for example, you had shown that for the second landing, it took almost a month to find the specific area and land. So I was just curious to what goes in terms of the celestial mechanics and all the calculations when a problem occurs and the communication delay is also present. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, uh, this uh, in the case of uh, Ryugu, uh, as I told uh, today, the uh, touchdown area was very uh, small. So we need a very accurate navigation. So. For this, we uh, made a uh, lot of uh, simulation. Uh, we assumed many kinds of uh, disturbance, and and uh, and also we checked uh, the size of boulders on the surface near the surface, mm -hmm. and uh, we made a lot of. Uh, uh, calculation, uh, simulation, and after that, we, we, we confirm, confirmed that we can do the exact touchdown. So uh, this, this is not easy to uh, explain, explain, but uh, uh, we assume lots of uh, 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 disturbance or perturbation to our, uh, we estimate the uh, we had estimated the gravity field of Ryugu, but we did many things. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we were sure that we can do the touchdown. And then we did. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go to Thomas. Yes, so um, again, like Alejandro said, congratulations. This is, seems to be like a very complex mission and and it's it's a quite a successful story so far. So let's hope the sample returns in, in good health. Um, so I'm going to try to pull together some questions from the Q&A. There are many questions and comments related to uh, the chemistry of, um, mm -hmm. of the samples and how you actually sampled the, the two touchdown points. So um, Alfredo Navarrete and... Um, Elizabeth, Arthur, uh, sorry, the questions jump around again. <laughs> Vida, Vida moi, um, asking about you know what the what you expect from from the chemical, the organic chemical composition back on Earth, like how you will um, analyze this, and of course it's some somehow related to when we sample, right? When we sample these asteroids, we sample sort of the protoplanetary disk chemistry modulo the dynamical evolution of the protoplanetary disk after 
right? The planets have established themselves in the orbits and the dynamics is working. Um, the sampling points that you chose, were they along the equator, both, or were they, you know, one was further north or south um, around the rotation axis? Could you actually expect some variance? And um, do you actually have the samples in two separate uh, capsules, or is this all pulled together material and then we have to figure out where it belongs? So let's start okay. with that question. Yes. Okay. So the sampling, uh, two sampling point, uh, points is uh, uh, near the equator, both, of, both near the equator. And uh, uh, the samples uh, are not mixed, they are separate. They uh, go goes into the separate uh, uh, room. So it's okay. And, uh, and one is uh, first touchdown, we get the surface material. And the second touchdown, maybe we also get the subsurface material. So we would like to uh, compare these uh, samples. And, uh, and of course, uh, main target is organic matter. We want to know what kind of organic matter exists. Right, so, so basically like prebiotic chemistry, that's the holy grail, right, of, of detecting it on, a, on an asteroid. Has anything been, uh, I mean, we have many um, uh, meteorites, right? Uh, the Murchison meteorite is the most famous one, I guess, right, where you have this, this very complex chemistry. Um, maybe to Mike as well, the question, is there, is there like complex, any complexity already known? Like, do you have any lab already on the spacecraft that you can somehow peek into, into the materials and see what you can expect? And what will you do on Earth with that, with that material? Like, are there any experiments already planned? Like, can you talk to that a little bit more? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we do not know uh, how, how much sample we got before opening the capsule. So, uh, 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 so after uh, uh, opening the capsule, we will uh, we know how much sample we got. But anyway, uh, in uh, we have a sample analysis team in our project, and and they are planning how to analyze the sample. So there are many. Uh, 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 studies uh, and uh, since now I don't have uh, uh, exact information, but uh, uh, they will do similar to the case of the Hives of One sample analysis. Okay, so sorry, I don't have a good uh, uh, materials now, but uh, yes. Uh, Okay. <laughs> so, yes. yeah. so, so, so I think uh, our analysis plans are probably pretty similar in that what we don't know what we don't have it yet, right? But people are formulating plans, and of course, some of the analyses are things like look at look at it in a microscope, and others are dissolve it up in acid. So people are organizing the the plans. So you start with the ones that you can do easiest, and it ends up dissolved up in acid. Um, sm small pieces of the of the sample. So there's a long chain of things, um, and mostly it'll be people who study meteorites doing this. And I think we 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 have reason to believe that actually both Ryugu and Bennu may be things that we don't have meteorites from because the rocks appear to be much more fragile than than most of the meteorites. And that would be really cool if it's something we haven't seen before. So we're both we both have our fingers crossed that that maybe it's something totally new. <laughs> yes, uh, I have I found my slide in my slide uh, the case for the Hayabusa one sample analysis. So just uh, show you this. Uh, so this is uh, in Japanese, but uh, so this is a. Uh, uh, what we, we did for the Hayabusa one sample, I mean Itokawa sample. So maybe you can see these uh, 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 English uh, words. And uh, 
so, so this is also Japanese, but uh, we use these, we use these uh, uh, things to analyze the, the sample. So uh, in addition to this, uh, in, in high after two case, we uh, analyze the uh, organic matter. So is there any uh, when the when the capsules come back? I mean, you obviously take precautions of not opening it in in atmospheric conditions. Um, do you expect any any danger um, from these sample returns? <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's no danger, yes. <laughs> okay, I think Rohan had a question. So let's go to Rohan before we finish. Hi, um, I just had a question of why uh, Ryugu was specifically chosen for this mission. And like, how are the objects chosen for specific missions in general? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, the main reason is, uh, 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 yes, at, at first we looked for the uh, asteroid that uh, Hayabusa 2 can reach, of course. This is a technical reason. And uh, we found about uh, 20 or 30 asteroids that Hayabusa 2 can reach and go back to the Earth. And among them, uh, only Ryugu was the C type. All of the all, all others. Uh, S type. So that's why uh, we uh, choose, uh, choose, chose Ryugu. Of course, Bennu is uh, another target, but uh, in Hypes 2 case, uh, Bennu is not good because the spin period, period is uh, short and spin is very fast. So the method of Hypes 2 touchdown, it is not, uh, uh, I think it is difficult to touch down to the, to Bennu. So we excluded the Ben. So we the only uh, target, the only target was the uh, new group. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's wrap this up here. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today, everyone. Uh, for Dr. Yoshikawa's talk. And thank you very much to Makoto-san for taking the time in the early morning hours to tell us all about the mission. Tomo, uh, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. That's Saturday, early morning. I That's guess. right, yes. <laughs> so please be so kind, uh, if you're still around, to fill out the survey after we end this Zoom webinar. Um, our next scheduled talk will be on October 16th, and it will be given by Rob Kennicott, who will be telling us about the cosmic ecosystem, star formation and galaxy evolution through the lens of a scaling law. And uh, isn't star formation a bit like weather, he's asking. So he will explain all that to us in this next webinar. So thank you very much again, everyone. Please stay safe, please stay healthy. And until the next golden webinar in astrophysics, take care. Thank you.